Startups and CEO of Ingify. We're going to talk about bootstrapping and Boot Up India. Boot Up India is a program where we intend to celebrate bootstrapping and support selected startups for a year through various activities. The key benefits include structured group mentoring, media visibility, and many more. You can check out bootupindia.net for more information. Without any further ado, let's hear from Paras. Paras, you are a great story for the startup ecosystem in India, and I personally become a fan of you after I watch your unplugged talk on how to bootstrap a tech startup in India. Please give us a, a glimpse of you and your journey so far um, and your early days um, uh, stories um, so that our viewers uh, can get inspired from it. Okay. Um, so thanks for having me here. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to talk about uh, my company and especially about uh, the journey, which was just very much interesting. So Wingify was started about uh, uh, four years back in 2010. So 2010 is when we officially incorporated, but of course, uh, I started working on the initial prototypes uh, even before officially incorporating. So I was starting to, so domain was registered somewhere in probably late 2008 or early 2009, wingify.com. So that was the seed of the idea was planted uh, a lot earlier. Right. So... Uh, uh, I mean, pers personally for me, I was always interested in startups uh, uh, as I started coding uh, in Visual Basic in while I was in ninth standard in school. And uh, I read Paul Graham essays. So Paul Graham is a, uh, he's the founder of Y Combinator, which is a very popular uh, accelerator in US. And he writes uh, very well on why you should be doing the startup, how to do startup. Then I read Founders at Work, which is a book containing about uh, 20, 25 interviews of startup founders like Yahoo, Excite, and all of that while I was in skill, still in school got me a lot interested in startups. So that is, so even in my school I knew I always had, had to do a startup of my own. So when it came to my college, I did my uh, engineering from Delhi College of Engineering. And uh, even there, so you get about two months free between uh, your uh, semesters and I would be doing a startup between those semesters. So I did about uh, three different startups uh, uh, during my college days. All of them failed. Uh, so some of them were in music, some were in uh, 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 social media, and they were just in different industry, but nothing really worked out uh, in a fantastic fashion. And with every startup, it was actually a learning opportunity for me that uh, not just the technology, but also marketing matters a lot. So that is how I started learning more about marketing. I started learning more about Google Analytics, online marketing, SEO, PPC. And that is how I started specializing and becoming good at the marketing, online marketing field. Right. And so eventually I realized that uh, there's an opportunity in A-B testing space because I was very deeply involved with marketing and I spotted this opportunity. Um, so at, at that point of time, there was a tool called Google Website Optimizer, which mm. was free by, it was a free A-B testing tool by Google, but it was very hard to use. Uh, so everywhere you read uh, in the forums, you read a lot of complaints that it's, it's very hard to use. It's not meant for marketers. So I, I thought, let's just solve this A-B testing problem. And that was this initial idea. And as I was doing this, I involved Sparsh. Uh, who's my business partner at Wingify now. He's from the same college, Delhi College of Engineering. Mm -hmm. And now we both have built this company of about 60 people now and all based out of uh, India. And we are doing about 8 to $9 million in uh, revenue rate. And uh, we haven't raised any funding so far. Excellent. So yeah, since we're talking about funding, meaning you have said in one of the blog posts that refrain from sharing equity as much as possible, you know, try using them. So what is that, um, what do you really mean by that, you know, how strongly you feel the bootstrapping, uh, you know, should be used, you know, all means uh, to start up? Yeah. Um, so so with, with that, for Tom, in terms of, uh, say, refrain from sharing equity, I really meant that equity is a very expensive 
uh, form of getting money, right? Because ultimately, you have this 100% as equity. You can't just use it indefinitely. So I, I didn't mean that you should not be sharing equity at all. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, and and I'm a believer that you should be sharing equity with the employees. And uh, we are starting to implement a stock option plan at at our company. And I'm I'm a very uh, uh, big believer in just you know uh, making sure the people who have contributed to the company get uh, compensated for their efforts. And equity is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. But what what I meant uh, by that, you know, you shouldn't be raising money or diluting just just for the sake of you know it's it's like a milestone for the company it's I don't think especially for tech startups from India early on it should be a milestone that yeah. they have raised X amount of funding because mm -hmm. the cost of prototyping has become so cheap uh, right. when I started Wingify I literally started with just a domain name which was 400 rupees and uh, virtual private server, which was uh, twenty dollars, which would be about a thousand rupees, you know, per month. So this this investment of say a thousand, two thousand rupees per month, uh, that should be enough to at least validate the idea and kickstart things. And even for scaling, the best scaling is you know scale with the customers' uh, revenue. And uh, there comes a point when you have figured out a lot of things and capital really becomes the constraint for the growth and that is when it might make sense to you know dilute but before that just for that bragging rights that we have raised X amount of money uh, okay. I, I think it would be better off if you can uh, uh, if you can get the those source of funds from somewhere else if you really need that right it seems like the bootstrapping is a very natural flow for you right you know and and but if you have to restart at this point in time with the current knowledge that you have, so what would you basically still bootstrap Wingify, or or you think you could take external fund and you know choose a rapid growth? No, uh, I would not uh, take any external funding if I were to rewind it. And the reason for that is not related to rapid growth. I mean, we have grown hundred percent year on year. And in four years, we have scaled to about uh, eight to nine million dollars. So it's it's quite a good growth uh, uh, already. But uh, if you think about, say, a business like Wingify, which is a SaaS business, mm -hmm. where we are selling worldwide and charging in dollars, mm -hmm. but our cost structure is really Indian, so that creates a lot of positive cash flow. And uh, so so the first obvious step is to invest that cash flow. So uh, so that is how you get the first level of growth, and uh, and we have done that, and that's how we have grown 100% uh, uh, year on year. So I don't see how could additional capital would have really helped us in a right. very uh, uh, in a very big way. It might have shifted say here and there, but mm -hmm. really the constraint for growth was not for for us at least, and for me the constraint for growth was not capital. But it was really uh, the other things, say, uh, you know, uh, company getting matured, my own thinking getting matured as far as scaling is concerned. Frankly, initially, I, all I wanted to make was, you know, just 50,000 rupees because yeah. my startups were not working. Uh, I mean, my college startups did not work out, and now I wanted at least one of my projects to work out something. Mm -hmm. So, so. You know, scaling a company to eight to nine million dollars was just not what I had in mind. Sure. Uh, uh, so, additional yeah. capital didn't didn't really make sense for me. Yeah, I think it it, it looks to me uh, what you're saying and what you have done um, is that funding has nothing to do with the way you can scale the company. Meaning, there are yeah. variety of factors that could actually define how you scale. I mean, if people say that you must take funding if you want to scale like 100 fold or 200 fold, I mean, it looks like you have already done that without taking that external funding. Right. Yeah. So what I, I mean, my perspective on this is that there's a lot of value in working with uh, say good VC firms and mm -hmm. uh, value is much less to do with the capital 
but more right. to do with the the uh, you know the how smart the good VCs themselves are, what a good understanding of market they have, and the sort of network they have in make in terms of making the introductions and helping you build the team. Right. So in, in in initial stages of scaling, all you need is a sounding board and actually a board that comprises a board of directors of the companies that constantly challenge you, constantly gives you ideas, mm -hmm. and constantly make sure that you progress towards scaling. And yeah. uh, yeah. I mean, Indian B two B SaaS companies have a very good cost advantage, mm -hmm. especially for a Silicon Valley. Start of where you you have to pay an engineer say 150k uh, mm -hmm. uh, per year. And they they might require seed funding, but mm -hmm. for us even hiring engineers it's like one fourth the cost. Sure. So why sure. do you need to raise an equal amount of money? Why can't you fund it from your customers? Sure. I think it it makes what you basically say uh, saying is bootstrapping a company in India is, is, is a very good choice you know, and, and it is very possible you have proved it and other people can do that. But that said, um, I think what you said is very valuable. The VC's fund is not only money, it, the other, other value they bring into the table is very important. And Bootstrap India is, is exactly trying to do the same thing where people don't really need money uh, only to basically scale up, but they may actually have a situation where Financial problem is not that a big problem, but the operational challenges, their scaling challenges for different reasons is more important, and they need advisor, a sounding board, a good um, and a board members to to support them and grow the business. And we we're exactly trying to do the same thing. And I would like to basically hear you are part of a jury of Boot of India. What exactly motivated you to participate uh, to in this program? I, I think this is an excellent initiative uh, uh, because, uh, to be frank, bootstrap companies do not get as much attention as they deserve. Mm -hmm. so if you open up any popular tech blog, you know, all these stories are are about you know X Y Z company raised ten million dollars, they raised five million dollars, they raised two million dollars. So there is a lot of funding related news, mm -hmm. and uh, and I just feel funding. Should not be treated as a milestone in the company. And mm -hmm. funding is really a tactical thing that you see a clear growth opportunity, and you are taking external funding to uh, actually make use of that growth opportunity. So uh, why why celebrate it? In fact, bootstrap companies that have proven that uh, they are able to actually turn a a profit mm -hmm. all by itself, they they should be recognized and they should be written about. But but the world right now, especially from a publicity point of view, it it just somehow revolves around VC funded companies. So that that's what excited yeah. me. That uh, just to see and uh, just to know that there are so many bootstrap companies, just just very exciting for me. Uh, this is possible, and especially from India, I'm sure that in US and Silicon Valley, where the cost of starting up is still high, as far as people is concerned. You know, mm -hmm. Uh, their companies just because costs are high, they might require a lot of funding. But in India, the costs are low, and you can just start using, say, AWS and other technologies that are, and essentially, even for engineers, you can save so much of cost. So why are there not more bootstrap companies out of India? And only these examples that come up from this contest will make people aha, this is possible. Uh, that's that's very true. I think, I mean, that that says that we really wanted to balance the fact that you know you can celebrate the growth regardless of you whatever the funding path that you've chosen, whether it's a customer funded or it's a VC funded, really hard, hardly really matters, right? So, um, what what do you exactly uh, think the startups that will join this program, you know, how would they get benefited out of this program? Oh. I I think first of all uh, publicity uh, would be uh, the one very obvious benefit. Uh, no, like I said, I, the I, the the world is biased against bootstrap startups. I feel you know if if you yeah. write to say TechCrunch, Mashable, or any other blog, it's very hard to get a journalist's attention uh -huh. unless a VC makes an intro. You know, right. People would pass on, and we we have faced that. You know, we have struggled. 
in getting uh, attention of journalists because we have been bootstrapped. So, so for a lot of say journalists, uh, venture funding is sort of a signal that this company is worth paying attention to. But if you're not VC funded, there has to be some sort of a signal that this business is interesting, whether it has raised funding or not. Exactly. So, so a lot of startups uh, on a lot of businesses from this program will benefit from here. And second, so, of course, is the entire mentoring thing that uh, right. uh, the VC funded companies have the benefit of mm -hmm. having a boss on top of them, which is investors mm -hmm. who would ask every quarter that, hey, are you growing or not? What are you doing and all of that? But for a lot of bootstrap companies, ultimately, they only have customers as bosses. But right. they really ought to have someone else who is questioning them, someone else who is mentoring them, coaching them. Uh, right. And that's going to be very helpful for their growth as well. Excellent. So basically credibility and, and a sounding board or a mentoring is, is a very important factor and they will get out of this program. Yeah, that's right. Right. So um, so what, you know, asking for you, you know, what you think you will get benefited, how you will get benefited out of this? this program? Uh, it, it, it's a very indirect benefit, but I would benefit if ultimately the uh, tech community in India benefits, if ultimately the startup community in India benefits, and the, especially the bootstrap community in India benefits. So it's a, it's a very indirect connection, but uh, I'm a very big believer in that if, if the entire ecosystem it becomes better, Everyone ultimately benefits from it, and especially it just it just gratifies me a lot to see that Wingify is not alone uh, right. when it comes to its bootstrap journey. And there's a lot of other businesses that are doing it that have done it, and together there's just so much for even us to learn from the, the businesses who come out from this program. Exactly. Sounds good. Uh, talking about ecosystem, I think we spoke about you know, how media uh, doesn't pick up a successful bootstrap company uh, versus you know somebody get ten million dollar funding and that become a celebration a point. Um, so how you think? Um, how what would be the you know if you given a chance to balance this out in the ecosystem, what do you think you we should do to to uh, to build that ecosystem in such that we promote the companies based on their business, based on what they're really solving than you know how they're basically funding their or running their companies. Oh yeah, it I mean I don't it's it's very important to do that, but I don't think there's an easy answer for this. Right. Especially from uh, our perspective, I think ultimately the uh, journalist and ultimately the tech news media and the publications have to understand that uh, uh, there is there's a lot of value uh, in that bootstrap companies create. I mean, in an ideal world, I would love to read a, a publication that is just dedicated to covering bootstrap startups. You know, that would be such niche and interesting publication. Say instead of say something like TechCrunch, I could go and read a magazine or a blog or a publication that profiles interesting businesses. So 37 Signals, uh, they started doing it in their series where they just profiled and wrote about bootstrapped startups and bootstrapped companies mm -hmm. that had a million dollar in sales. Mm -hmm. And it, it is a beautiful series. I loved reading it. I got so much of inspired. For some reason, they have stopped doing it. But I think just a lot more publicity to these bootstrapped companies and their journeys and the business internals would, mm -hmm. would benefit getting people's attention that these businesses are real too. Yeah, I mean, what I was trying to point it out is if you know, the ecosystem builder like iSpirit, so what, how do we basically help this ecosystem in, in terms of um, boosting that morale of bootstrap company? And you know, what are the, what is that our responsibility? You know, you are part of the iSpirit in many different ways. Um, and you know, so that's what I was like trying to see. What is your vision, and how you think we could actually help? I think uh, as as a community, if uh, we can benefit uh, each other quite a lot, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Uh, say as far as the uh, publications are concerned and the exposure is concerned, I'm sure each one of us would know some journalist or the other 
we can always cross intro people you know if if you tell me that hey paras this is an interesting bootstrap the company and mm-hmm. they are trying to uh, uh, get covered on xyz publication mm-hmm. i'll be more than happy to do an intro and that is where the community could help that uh, uh, just helping each other unconditionally mm-hmm. and uh, secondly maybe such kind of initiatives like boot up india it's a great initiative Uh, you could maybe combine it with uh, profiling uh, the uh, companies themselves, and uh, if if it is a continued program like a dedicated blog featuring bootstrap companies, mm. not, nothing beats that. So it's a lot of effort, but but everyone would have to pitch in mm. in helping everyone else. Yeah. yeah. Ultimately, I guess the larger thing is we'll have to act our own venture capitalists mm. You know, mm. and the help. Uh, each of the companies yeah. yeah i mean what i am hearing from your you know from the entire discussion there is a big pain point about media or or being covered in you know, a worldwide or in the local market so so that's good but i i wanted to close up with one question that if uh, what would be your top uh, five priorities and you know, what do you t- uh, tell um, a a um, new or a young entrepreneur if it's bootstrap um what you think in in your mind will be top five priorities for them uh i i think the f- first and top most priority as a ceo and founder should be to ensure your company has enough cash uh as a reserve for the entire company to sustain say for next even 12 months Mm-hmm. uh even if revenues go to zero so building that reserve is very important because uh i mean the in the as a vc company you can raise funds you have enough funds but uh, uh bootstrap companies cash is the king you cannot really you know sustain on a razor thin margin where you are maybe making a loss or just making a profit so mm-hmm. so ensuring you every month generate enough cash that goes into reserve gives you a lot of padding in the future to take bolder and uh, riskier investments and bets because you don't want to just you know live month to month as far as the company is concerned you want to be having a much broader vision and you you want to even invest in the future even as a bootstrap company so financial prudence is the topmost priority in my dictionary and the second most uh, priority would be to build a company's brand because that really helps in hiring as a bootstrap company you cannot rely on a lot of intros by people who say like venture capitalists you know who have a network uh so we, and and brand really helps as far as hiring and also say ultimately having a conversation with journalists is concerned because you want to position your company as that someone who is doing a lot of important work and that requires a lot of work that you continuously produce uh uh good insights you continuously make sense in whatever talks you are doing and you continuously tell that hey you know wingify is an important company and here is why it is important right. uh, you cannot rely on other people to help you out you are really on your own hmm. and uh and 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 the third advice would be to really not to uh, you know get worried uh from your uh, well funded competitors because there is this disadvantage of having a lot of money as well if tomorrow you raise say 10 million dollars you can't just sit on that cash you have to invest that money uh no investor would give you money and expect to keep it in the bank you'll have to make use of that cash in say next uh, 12 months or 18 months and that means if if you have a competitor that has raised a lot of money they might be using it less effectively or they might end up making mistakes that might implode their culture or that might make them take some steps they should not have taken so right. so it it's really not a matter of uh, getting afraid in fact not having a lot of money may work in favor of you because you'll be really thinking the core business fundamentals in the right way uh, hmm. and not be rash and rash about you know let's do whatever for right. growth sake right yeah. yeah 
Yeah, that's excellent. Um, I think I just wanted to conclude um, um, by uh, saying that we have received, uh, our application has been closed and we have received significant amount of quality applications and we will be announcing the selected eight startups on the 2nd of October. Thank you for listening and thank Great. you Paris for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Good luck. Bye-bye.